Kicking off the list at number 10, The Tulip Staircase. We'll dive right into the spooky goodness with a 1966 classic. This photo looks like the cover of a horror movie or a Kendrick Lamar album. It looks set up, right? It looks nice. The black and white hue with the ghostly figure slowly making its way up the tulip staircase, okay. This photo is from 1966 and experts in photography all agree that this photo here has not been tampered with at all. So how scary is that? Makes you ask some questions, right? We didn't have Photoshop or deep fakes back in 1966. We barely had a camera, right? Haunting, yes, but since it looks almost too good to be true, we'll leave this at number 10. Let's move on. Number nine, power problems. This one's for sure real. Very, went from maybe to definitely real. This comes from a middle-aged man in Oxford, North Carolina. It was his day off work. He was looking to relax all day, just kick back and hang out in the house. Then out of nowhere, on his day off, the lights start to flicker and immediately the smoke detector also goes off. What's happening? The lights were flickering all over the house, not just in one room. The fridge, the bathroom, any light at all, it was flickering. Even the water started to run by itself. So no, it was not an electrical issue. He filmed all these happenings, of course, but when he looked back at all the footage, you know, after running to safety. He caught this photo of a demon peeking from the other room. Check it out. There's another peeking demon photo on this list. I don't know what it is about demons, but they like peeking out at you. Yeah, it's haunting. Stay tuned. Number eight, house guest. For this next one, we'll be taking a look at a video. I know, I know. I said demon photos. This one's so small that it may as well be a photo. Nothing too crazy happens. Check it out. Keep an eye on the staircase next to the kitchen. Didn't see anything? Okay, what about now? This footage was taken August 8th, 2019. It's around 1 a.m. in the home of an unnamed family. Oh, it was a good sign. I've seen too many of those paranormal activity movies to watch this. This is creepy. I wouldn't even be able to watch footage of my own house with those like hidden cameras, you know what I mean? Like I'd be afraid to go through and scroll. What if I find something? Then what? The cat doesn't notice anything in this video, which is either a really good sign or a really bad sign. Cause cats see everything, right? They're so mischievous. Cats will be like mid-conversation and all of a sudden just... Number seven, playtime. We know demons like to play games, I guess, so this next one here seems rather fitting. Seeing as it takes place in a Toys R Us. Yeah, you heard me. Bay Area's haunted Toys R Us. They locked its doors forever as of 2018. The aisles may be closed, but do the ghosts still haunt the building? Are there haunted toys walking around? Is there a haunted Buzz Lightyear that's gonna come out and extend its wings at me. The Sunnyvale Toys R Us demon appeared in the background of this photo. Others seen in this photo, you know, people who aren't demons, they all swear nobody else was there at the time of this photo. Nobody haunting, at least. Could this be a spirit caught in a photo that just happens to be at a Toys R Us? I mean, it's kind of funny, but like, you know, ghosts don't have to haunt scary things. They can haunt normal things too. They can haunt hotels, they can haunt old restaurants and Toys R Us apparently. I don't know, demons are demons. They can do what they want. Employees have talked about creepy things happening at night at this location. It's not the only time it's happened. Yeah, fun. It turns out that Sunnyvale store is indeed haunted by more than one ghost. The store stood where the Murphy farm once stood. So many think it's the spirit of Johnny Johnson. I don't know, sounds like a, sounds like a ghost rider bill. This sounds kind of like a made up story, but who knows? Ouija boards are considered toys. Can you believe that? So maybe he's just trying to get a phone. Maybe he's trying to get a new phone plan. I don't know. Number six, Coventry Society Demon. When it comes to these old timey photos, everybody looks like a ghost no matter what, right? It's always blurry, it's black and white. There's smudges that appear all over the place. So sometimes when you see them, you want to give it a good idea. You're like, oh, maybe it's not a demon. Maybe it's a nice ghost. Maybe it's someone who I know who has passed away and this specific smudge here is them coming to visit. Sure, I'm not gonna knock that, that's a great idea, awesome. Well, it's nice to believe that photos like this from the Coventry Freeman Society shows everybody that demons might actually be real. This event has everybody dressed to the nines, but when you look at the top left over here, you see a hooded figure. Somebody that clearly doesn't belong with the vibe in this room. I don't know what kind of party this is, but this dude does not blend in. He got the wrong memo. He's like, oh, I thought you said it was like a costume kind of thing with like hoods. They're like, no, it's formal, Roger, come on. Nobody else was seen wearing a hood like this, so many believe it was a dark part of the afterlife. Just, you know, photobombing this event. Demons, always pranksters, hopping in at photos, peeking around corners. Classic, they like pranks. Number five, the Amityville photo. This photo was taken inside the Amityville house back in 1976. It appears to be a young boy with glowing white eyes. He's pretty hard to miss there. See him? 
right there. Yeah, you got it. Nice. Good eye. At first, I thought this was from a horror movie that I missed, you know? Like, it looks so obviously fake or set up in some way until you start to read up on the details. This photo was taken with automatic cameras equipped with infrared, so this young lad here probably wasn't expecting a selfie. Photographer Gene Campbell took this photo in 1976, and Gene at the time was working with paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren. So that's how you know this bit of history here is real, to some degree. The photo was revealed three years after it was taken on the Merv Griffin Show, and many believe this is the ghost of the young John DeFeo, one of the boys who lived there in 1974. Number four, the specter of Newby Church. From all the way back in 1963, this photo has been passed around from time to time. We've mentioned it on this channel before, it's pretty good. It's one of the most convincing, if you ask me, considering its date. Is this the demon of General Grievous from Star Wars? This guy's, what is going on here? He's haunting, very tall. Looks like he has four lightsabers. Reverend K.F. Lord took this photo in England at the Newby Church, and Lord ensures us that this photo is 100% real. Would anybody named Lord lie to us? You know? I'm just saying. I think not. The photo looks too good to be true, I'll admit. I mean, this entity is literally facing the camera, you know, so I get it. The figure appears to stand on the first step of the altar, yet somehow it's still taller than the altar. Super Tall Demons from 1963. This was almost number one. Almost. You'll see. Number three, a helping hand. This photo is pretty old, hence convincing. This time the photographer may or may not have caught a floating spirit hands. Apparently they're a thing. Awesome. I'll show you the photo. You let me know if you see it at first. Take a good look. Anything sticking out? Any little creepy hands crawling around? No? This photo is a group of women who worked in a linen factory. The lady on the far right uh, appears she has an extra hand there resting on her shoulder uh, at a weird angle too. Maybe she was scratching her back and then it was like, hey, she's you know? No, it's impossible. I, I did the math. I tried. There's no way. I'm a lanky guy. I tried this in the office. There's no way. This is definitely a demon hand. It looks curled almost, the hand. Like, I don't want to roast somebody's hand and say it looks demonic. It's just the fact that we can see the open space next to the right of the lady in the photo, and there's nobody standing there. That's what makes this convincing. I'm not like, oh, it's a skinny, veiny hand. That's got to be a ghost. Some guy's like, thanks, man. What? No, there's no one standing there. That's the whole point. This reminds me of the movie Idle Hands. This gives me the creeps. That movie scared me growing up. I don't like it. Phantom Hands? No thank you. Unless you're hitting that thumbs up there, there shall be no Phantom Hands in my premise. Number two, ancient Egyptian demon paintings. Yes, I said paintings, okay? Hear me out. This list is full of the most convincing paranormal photos on the internet, but I had to toss in a little treat, a little historical treat. Demons have been putting fear into the minds of ancient Egyptians even 4,000 years ago. Yeah, demonology is not a new thing. It's not like horror movies came out and it's like, oh, there's demons now. Old, really old. Back in 2016, Whale Sherbini, who specializes in ancient religious texts, found the image of not one, but two demons. They found them painted on two Middle Kingdom coffins. The demon represented here is the demon Ikinti. It's represented as a large bird with a cat's head, a black cat's head. This evidence was presented at the International Conference on Ancient Egyptian Demonology over at Swansea University in the United Kingdom. Am I attending the wrong meetings in life? I need to go check out some ancient Egyptian demonology conferences. That sounds like a great time. What? Another example of demons being present in ancient Egyptian days was the image of Amut. Amut is a female demon whose body was part hippo, part crocodile, and part lion. Hard to miss. And finally, coming in at number one, the Manila Demon. No, I didn't say Vanilla Demon. That sounds delicious. This is much scarier. This is one of my biggest fears in life, okay? To go on a trip, take a bunch of photos with a wind-up camera, that would be the worst. Come back and then find something haunting that I missed in real life in the photos, right? That's like every horror movie. It's the worst. That's exactly what happened when two friends posed for a photo together in the Philippines. This was back in 2000. At the time, they didn't feel anybody grab their arm, which I fully believe because there's no reaction in this photo. Also, if somebody was that close, somebody they didn't know, there's no chance they would sneak into the frame that quickly. Also, is this demon Dobby the house elf? What? This is a, not a haunting look, but it's definitely a look. It looks like a bridge troll. A bridge troll with tiny hands. But either way, I'm all set. Starting off this list, in our number 10 spot, we have muscle tissue. Muscle tissue are the soft tissues that make up different types of muscles in most animals. It is composed of cells that have the ability to shorten or contract, which is what then produces the movement of body parts. The tissue is very cellular and is well supplied with blood vessels, and it basically is just an essential part of our lives and our bodies. When viewed under a microscope, however, the tissue looks even more unsettling than I would have ever imagined. This photo wasn't 
wasn't taken under just any old microscope and of course required sophisticated equipment, but it truly is an incredible capture. Just one fascinating part of the human body. In our number 9 spot today we have a fruit fly eye. I guess the eye of a fruit fly isn't like the most normal everyday object, but like it's certainly not unusual. I mean, how many fruit fly eyes are out there right now? Anyway, no one is arguing with me, I just got defensive for no reason. Under a microscope a fruit fly's eye looks so strange. Not only is the eye like segmented into these little hexagon shapes, but there's also these weird things poking out of them. I don't know, it looks weird and I don't like it. The good news though is that fruit flies are so teeny tiny I've never really seen one of their eyes before. I'm definitely not looking that close at them, so maybe this is one image I'll one day be able to erase from my mind. Besides grossing me out, it is kind of cool. Basically those things that are pointing out are clusters of light sensitive cells organized into rods. When light strikes one, a series of chemical reactions begins and this is the beginning of the process of how they see things. There are actually kinds of fruit flies that apparently have some of the most advanced eyes among insects, so that's also pretty cool for fruit flies. In our number 8 spot today we have chalk. The White Cliffs of Dover is the region of English coastline that is facing the Strait of Dover and France. The cliff face reaches over 350 feet tall and part of what makes this region so beautiful to look at is the fact that the cliffs are made from chalk and they have these beautiful streaks of black flint throughout them that was deposited during the late Cretaceous period. So. Here's the super cool thing, this chalk that makes up the cliffs when put under a microscope, it looks like this. This might be surprising to you and that is because it isn't just a regular old rock. This chalk is an accumulation of ancient skeletons. I'm not even joking, the chalk is made up of what is left of the single celled ocean dwelling plankton. The flint throughout is composed of the remnants of sea sponges and siliceous planktonic microorganisms that hardened into the microscopic quartz crystals. I swear if I were you I'd think I was making it up, but this is what gives the cliffs such a beautiful appearance to the naked eye and an even more exceptional one under a powerful microscope. The history of the earth is so important and it really has shaped the environment and geological features that we see today. In our number 7 spot today we have a zebra fish. There's just some things you assume you'll never see under a microscope and the larva of the zebra fish is definitely one of those things. Well I guess it's actually something I've just never thought about at all because why would I? Zebrafish are freshwater fish that belong to the minnow family. They are native to South Asia and they are actually a pretty popular aquarium fish. They are widely used in scientific research because of the fact that they have regenerative abilities and they are also often used as a model organism in research. That all being said, this is what their two day old larvae look like under a microscope. They're like little ghost fishes. Part of me thinks they're so cute and part of me is absolutely terrified. Kind of like a cursed seahorse or something. I don't know, I just feel like this is something we were never supposed to see. In our number 6 spot today we have a cat tongue. You know the old saying, cat got your tongue? Well it turns out the cat has all the tongues. It is well known that cats have a rough tongue as it is filled with little spines that are curved and hollow. These little spines give the creature the ability to transfer large amounts of saliva to their fur which not only helps to clean them more efficiently but it also helps to keep them nice and cool. It's like a smart comb that they just have built in. So using this knowledge it makes sense as to why under a microscope a cat's tongue looks like this. I said it makes sense, not that it isn't kind of a strange sight. It literally looks like a cat's tongue is made up of many more smaller tongues. I don't like it, but I can admit that it's kind of cool. In our number 5 spot today we have a human tongue. Speaking of a cat's tongue, we also have one of those things. Ours of course isn't made to be a super cool super smart comb, it's just the thing that sits in our mouth. It helps us eat, speak and differentiate between tastes and flavors. It's super important to us, but looking at it under a microscope kind of makes me want to rip it out. Not actually, but you get what I mean. Under a microscope our tongues look kind of similar to that of a cat's, but I don't know how to explain this any better other than more like cottony looking. I know, that was gross, but this photo just makes it so clear that the tongue is made up of muscle and the nodules of tissue look way more tissue like than we even realize when we look at our tongues. It's both fascinating and kind of unnerving to be honest. In our number 4 spot today we have a pillow. Pillows! The things we rest our weary heads on every night to get our 8 hours. Who am I kidding? Most of us are getting what? 
24 hours. Regardless of whoever sleeps the most or the least, our pillows all are going to be looking a little similar. The pillow seems so inviting, so warm, so cozy. It's a safe place, right? Wrong. You get up close to that thing, view it under a microscope, and you reveal all the other things that also like to rest their little heads on it. Under a microscope, the common house dust mites that lurk on many of our pillows become alarmingly visible, and as we speak, there's probably more than you'd like to know living in yours. These guys love to live on your pillow because their favorite food is your dead skin cells. Yeah, it's disgusting. I'd appreciate it if they could at least do something to alleviate nightmares, but no. They just are the nightmare. In our number three spot today, we have eyelashes. Speaking of little mites in places near your face, we see a lot of eyelashes in our day-to-day -day life. They help keep our eyes clean, and the stray ones give us wishes, and they seem like harmless little easy-going hairs. Right? Well, it turns out when we get a little closer, our eyelashes are the home to a disgusting little secret. The lashes aren't really the problem, the more concerning thing is the creatures that call them home. These creatures, called Demodex, are mites that live on everyone's eyelashes. They, like the pillow bugs, feed off of dead skin cells as well as the oil that collects in the follicles. Okay, are you ready for the worst part? I know, it's crazy we aren't past it yet, but here we go. At nighttime, while you're sleeping, these guys come out of your eyelashes and then they head to other regions of your face and this is where they mate. They then return to your lash follicles to lay up to 20 five eggs. Yeah, I hate it. I've said that a lot on this list today, but I hate this one the most for sure, hands down, no contest. In our number two spot today, we have vent worms. Hydrothermal vents live on the ocean floor and they are the result of tectonic activity. Through this tectonic activity, as seawater seeps downward through the oceanic crust, it gets really hot and becomes very rich in chemicals. This leads to the water becoming so buoyant that it comes back out of the surface of the sea floor and this is what is called a hydrothermal vent. The water coming out of the vent is that same super hot, super chemically rich water and it is an extremely important part of underwater ecosystems. The water from the vent is highly acidic and hot, while the water in the depths of the ocean is slightly basic and freezing. There are many different smaller species who come to the vent areas because of the chemicals in the water as well as the heat, which helps certain types of food sources grow, which they then want to consume. One of these creatures is aptly named the vent worm. These guys are super tiny and can't really be seen with the naked eye and we should all consider ourselves lucky for that because this is what they look like under a microscope. Like what in the absolute heck is that? Those teeth alone are forever etched into my mind, so don't even get me started on literally anything else. The good news here is that frightening, gross mouth in reality is less than a millimeter wide, so if I wasn't here talking about it, it is likely that none of us would have ever known this information. Just for a second though, imagine if that thing was like the size of a big snake. Or if it was like huge and Godzilla sized. I smell a horror movie coming up. The apocalypse, the return of the super giant vent worm. I don't know, those things are disgusting. In our number one spot today we have plaque. Okay, we're back looking at the human mouth, but this time we're taking it over to the bones that sit in our mouths. Of course, I'm talking about teeth. More specifically, the plaque that grows on them. I know, we want to pretend like it doesn't, but it's just the way it is. It's of course the reason why we gotta brush them every day. Keep them pearly whites sparkling clean. It is likely that at some point your dentist has explained to you that plaque is filled with tons of bacteria, and we like to not listen to dentists, but it turns out that they're right a lot of the time. Time. Like, even about flossing. I know, I don't want to hear it either, but sometimes we gotta face the music. Anyway, back to the plaque. When we look at the plaque under a microscope, we can see just how right the dentists are. Plaque is full of bacteria. Like, it is 100% made up of bacteria and quote, bacterial products, which I get the impression is just like bacteria poop. If you don't brush your teeth, it just builds and builds and it doesn't take that long at all. Just a cool eight hours is more than enough to feel like your teeth need a nice little cleaning. I feel like I need to go brush my teeth now. Kicking off the list at number 10, the largest known comet. Comet Bernadelli Bernstein. What a name right there. Okay, what a find as well, may I add. 
June 23rd, 2021, so pretty recently, Pedro Bernardinelli was a grad student and researcher. He was originally observing outer solar system objects like trans-Neptunian objects, stuff like that, but thanks to dark matter, he ended up finding this mega comet instead which is pretty sweet. He's like, sure, I'll take it, let's look into it. So he went to his advisor, a cosmologist named Gary Bernstein, and he told them to look into it. Like to literally look into it. 10 times wider than a typical comet. This thing is huge. Last time it was near our sun was a good three million years ago, and now it's back. Well, in 10 years, it'll be close. So get your wishes ready. All you have to do is say the comet's name three times fast, and you're set. Good luck. Bernard and Nelly Bernstein, Bernard and Nelly Bernstein, Bernard and Nelly Bernstein, yes. That's a hard name to say. I was Googling it and I'm like, oh man, I love your names. Great observation and all, but <sighs> actually no, that's great. That's a pretty sick name. I would name a comet my last name. McWaters, easy. Number nine, the unicorn. Not to be confused with Unicron, although both are equally scary, I'd say. The unicorn is the closest black hole to Earth. But don't panic, it's not gonna, you know, turn us into spaghetti anytime soon, so we're good. The unicorn gallops 1,500 light years away from Earth. It's far away, and it's also pretty small. It's a tiny black hole, so it's extremely hard to find. That's why telescopes like James Webb will come in handy, so we can identify more of these little guys. Researchers were able to find the unicorn because a near star, a red giant for that matter, had its light shifting towards something. It's always special when you see sunlight just doing this, just melting towards something. You're like, okay, let's take a look. So they named it the unicorn because it's also tucked away in the unicorn constellation, Monoceros. The fact that it's rare also inspired the name, so yeah, it's a win-win. They're like, unicorn? Wait, can we do this? This is perfect. Also, please don't turn us into spaghetti. Thank you so much, stay away. Number eight, a new star. Our sun is around 4.5 billion years old. Not that there's anything wrong with that, you know, she's still young at heart, but this new star over here, whew, she's hot. This protostar, during its crazy cosmic birth, jets of gas are now whipping through space at impossible speeds, and it's beautiful. Now we get to look at it and go, wow. Thumbs up. When this material collides with the matter of the still forming star, what's created is called a Herbig Barrow object. Hubble captured it and it is glorious. We're gonna get even more beautiful shots once James Webb warms up later on this year. So this is really, you know, it's kind of like nothing. Just wait. Number seven, the Veil Nebula. While most subjects on this list are far away from us, the Veil Nebula you can see with a common pair of binoculars on clear conditions. Today, we're going with NASA's Hubble telescope view. They got a pretty good look at this gas giant. What you see here is five different layers of ionized gases. This cloud is floating around 2,100 light years away. In order to get a photo of the entire nebula, it would be, well, near impossible. See, the Veil Nebula spans 130 light years wide, which is around 100 times larger than our own solar system. So yeah, binoculars ought to do it. You'll see it somewhere, it's pretty big. Number six, total eclipse. This total eclipse was not of the heart, but it did occur back in December 2021. Not long ago at all. If you didn't see a total eclipse a few months ago, don't worry, we all missed out. I mean, unless you live in Antarctica, we all missed out on this one. This was hard to catch. For a halfway point, I figured I'd throw in a relatable, nice, yet still haunting feature. This deep space climate observatory satellite snapped a pic, and honestly, it looks like the poster of Independence Day. This is real and very scary. This massive shadow of the moon just slowly moving across the land, like the Goosebumps intro, God, it's haunting to look at. Dark spot on the move, like something out of Star Wars almost. The next total eclipse will occur April 8th, 2024. This time it'll be in Canada, US, and Mexico. All those places will go dark, so get your flashlights ready. I'm already nervous. Number five, M64. M64, AKA the Evil Eye Galaxy, AKA the Sleeping Beauty Galaxy, which is a lot nicer. I think we should call it that from now on, definitely. This one might be the coolest space photos of all time. This looks like an artist made it with CGI. I feel like this is concept art from Interstellar. Oh my gosh. What makes the M64 Galaxy so impressive to look at and worthy enough to throw on this terrifying list is the way that it moves. Ooh, the way it moves is just so... Mm. Gas on the inner galaxy rotates in one direction and the outer layer spins the, well, you guessed it, opposite way. This is odd behavior for a galaxy. Scientists theorize that the Evil Eye Galaxy, sorry, <clears throat> Sleeping Beauty Galaxy, is the result of two galaxies crashing into one another. The fascinating thing really is we're looking at something 17 million light years away. So this image of the Evil Eye Galaxy, Sleeping Beauty, is actually from a long time ago, most likely. Mind bending, right? Space is pretty mind bending. Also terrifying. That's why the James Webb is such a big deal. We're gonna see very far into our past, theoretically. No one really knows what's gonna happen. He's just gonna look and, oh, dinosaurs. 
Number four, gamma bursts. Somebody give Bruce Banner a heads up because we got a lot of gamma. We have so much gamma. When we look at extinction level events, like say, I don't know, a meteor smashing into the planet, we can bounce back from that. Humans, evidently. I mean, look at us. We're doing lists now. We're like, hey, subscribe, hit that thumbs up. I mean, sure, we lost some dinosaurs along the way, but millions of years later, we're here, we're popping. But when it comes to gamma rays hitting the planet, yeah, we're, we're not so lucky at that point. We can't bounce back from that one. If a gamma ray happened any time in our past, be it millions of years ago, we still wouldn't be here. Gamma rays happen when stars explode in distant galaxies. See, light and energy then shoots out along with gamma rays, radio waves, neutrinos, just a cosmic cosmo, all that good space stuff, just shook up and then blasted at you. But then these gamma rays would travel light years through space and if they were to hit Earth, our ozone layer would be toast, just gone forever, just like that. We would be engulfed in chemical smog forever. No bouncing back from that at any point. Or if we did bounce back from it, we'd be lizards or something, you know? We'd be lizard people walking around, a bunch of licky dudes, just breathing on people. <laughs> That'd be okay. Number three, supernova. For this next one, we'll be looking at Beetlejuice. And no, I don't mean Michael Keaton, although he's pretty scary. I don't wanna say it three times. I'm keeping count just to be safe. I'm talking about the red giant located in the Orion constellation. It began to dim back in 2019, which is not a great sign. Its decay would be quite noticeable here on Earth. For example, the last time a star went supernova and we were able to observe it, the last time was 1604, and that was the Kepler star. It was beautiful and bright for weeks. Even during the day, we could still see it. All day long, people are like, that's gotta be pretty annoying, huh? Can't wait for that one. But when Betelgeuse finally dims out of existence, you have to wonder if we're far enough to be safe. Which sunscreen is good for solar flares? You know what I'm talking about? Like, I freckle up as is. I'm screwed if this happens. Scientists agree that we need to be much closer for the radiation to actually cause harm, but scientists also tell us quite often about these wandering stars and how black holes will just appear out of nowhere. So, who really knows? Beetlejuice. Number two, the sun. While it's not recommended we stare at it, the sun is pretty beautiful. Living in Canada, we're just now seeing it, maybe a little bit, just a tad, fingers crossed. No, nope, not really at all, I guess. It's a terrible idea to look at the sun, especially through a telescope, so we don't recommend that at all. Thankfully, we have photographer Andrew McCarthy to help out. Andrew layered together 150,000 different photos of the sun to create this 300 megapixel image for us to safely look at. I opened this photo on my phone and my phone literally got hot. I was like, wow, this is a great photo. I can actually feel it, it's so nice. Next time you're outside and it's hot, just remember that this <laughs> scary thing is floating above you. Think of that next time you're getting your tan lines. In order to not go blind or, you know, light any fires in his home, Andrew required a special telescope with numerous filters. So if you're thinking of pointing your phone or telescope at the sun today, just, just don't do that. It's like the magnifying glass trick with the sun. Yeah, just fires one-on-one. -on -one. It's all bad, don't even try. And finally, number one, James Webb. Oh, our boy James Webb. What's he doing? What's he up to right now? Let's always check out on him. I told you I'd be back with more. While we patiently wait for James Webb to look deeper into our cosmos, I figured I'd leave you on a fun one. Also kind of scary though. Both the James Webb Space Telescope and the European Space Agency's Gaia spacecraft both orbit the Earth and the Sun's Lagrange Point 2. So they both drift in between the two space giants and on February 18th, a month ago, literally, like this was so recent, Gaia actually managed to get an image of James Webb. Just hanging out. Now look, I thought deep sea photos were hard to look at and like scary. This is another level, this is scary, check it out. Around 930,000 miles away, James Webb just sits there and floats. And he waits to take photos of life and just anything. He's just a little photographer, just floating out there. Very little reflected sunlight came Gaia's way and Webb therefore appears as a tiny faint speck of light in Gaia's two telescopes without any details visible. That's the official statement on finding James Webb. They're like, well, it was right there, we saw it, it was just little. This spacecraft also isn't meant to be a telescope, in case you're wondering. It has a sky mapper on board, but the Gaia is originally meant to track celestial objects' positions and distances, all that, you know, technical jargon. Imagine James Webb taking a photo back, it would be so HD. It's like 8K, he's like, turn around, what? Mm -hmm.